So our presenter today is Robin Carlson. She's a quality reporting specialist at Stratus Health and expert in EDTC. So take it away, Robin. Hi everyone, um, can you hear me okay? Are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great, thank you. Um, thanks for having me today. Um, if you're wondering why we're at this site, um, this is the Stratus Health main web page and I want to be able to show you how to find the EDTC specs manual and that's what we're going to go over today. Um, for those of you who, who maybe don't know me, um, the reason why um, I'm here, I'm the one doing this today is um, yes, I work for Stratus Health and um, but my job today here is really my role um, as a member of the Rural Quality Improvement Technical Assistance Team. And that team um, came about because the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy, who runs the MBCRIP program, um, believed that the flex coordinators, the Kai and the Catherines, they needed some assistance with helping their critical access hospitals in hospital reporting. So my role on that team is to assist them, to assist you with hospital reporting. Um, for the EDTC measures, I've been involved with them since really the beginning. Um, I worked with the University of Minnesota uh, Rural Health Research Center on um, developing these. So I'm pretty close to them. <laughs> so what we'll do today um, uh, to get our groove back on, I, I love that title, by the way. Um, I'm going to go through, through the beginning, um, go through the population, how you know which records um, you should be using for this. And then we'll talk about the data elements. Um, I'm sharing my screen. That's the easiest way, I think, for you to see where I'm pulling things up and going along. So that's why I've left it to um, Kai and Catherine to monitor the chat. Um, I'll kind of stop after um, I finish an area and ask if there's any questions, but there should be plenty of time at the end too if I don't um, bring up something that you had a question on. And then there were a couple questions that Kai sent me um, that you guys sent in. And if I don't answer those as we go along, uh, I'll make sure to do those at the end too. All right, so um, I'm gonna get started. Like I said, um, oh, and let me apologize in advance. Um, you know, everybody with the technical stuff, um, hopefully you can hear me and I can hear you. Um, I'm in our, our office today. Um, I was having a little bit of trouble with the Google Teams at home, so I thought it would be easier in the office. Um, but we, our blowers are kind of loud, so I apologize if, um, but I hope you can hear okay. So um, how you find this, and the reason I'm starting here is because I want to say maybe three weeks ago, Stratus Health updated their website. So you might have been familiar with finding it um, on what our website used to look like, but it's different. So let me show you how you find it now, and then maybe you can bookmark it or whatever. Um, so we are at the main page. It's I. Don't know if you can see this really good, but it's uh, it's www.stratushealth.org, the main Stratus Health webpage. You Google Stratus Health, and you'll get to this page. What you want to do then is click on Current Initiatives, scroll down to Arkita, Rural Quality Improvement Technical Assistance. Come over here to the right. Scroll again till you get to the emergency department transfer communication measure. Here's our page with information regarding the emergency department transfer communication. Scroll down until you get to the data specifications manual. And then right here, here's where we'll find the manual. Here's where we also have a frequently asked questions. And here would be where you would find the tool. And then we do have some recorded resources. Um, we did a training on how to use the tool and recorded training on how to use the manual as well. So this is how you find the um, EDTC resources. So I'm going to pull up the tool. All right. Um, I, I should ask any questions so far. Everybody good with what we're doing? 
Nothing okay. in the chat so far, Robin. Nothing in the chat. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, table of contents. Um, I'm not going to go through every page of this. Um, I think, um, uh, unless there's anyone really new, um, everybody's familiar with the EDTC measure. It, there, it is one measure. It's the EDTC transfer communication measure. It is broken up into the different data elements, but it's an all or none measure. It's to, to get a yes when you're doing the abstraction, um, you have to answer yes to all these data elements for that patient to pass the measure. But they're broken up into the different data elements because these are, um, these are the things, this is the information that when we had a technical expert panel, these were the things that they felt were needed um, by that receiving hospital. So it's really just, it, it isn't, I think people get kind of confused and it's like they think it's, well, these are, these are all of the measures. No, there's just the one measure. And these are the, the data elements, the part of that measure. And I think, um, you know, my, what we want to do right now in this um, in this presentation is talk about how to do the abstract. But, you know, this um, I, I think, you know, people have a lot of strong feelings about about the measure. <laughs> um, but for me, I just think of it as if um, you've got someone who, who is seen in the ED. They went to the ED for a reason. OK. So when they leave that ED, if they are going to another facility where someone is taking care of them, okay, that facility needs to know what happened in that ED. That information should be made available to that facility. And um, for those of you who've been asked practicing a long time and you know, back last year when we had the 20 some data elements, um, our technical expert panel felt like, um, you know, those were the things that are almost always sent. Those aren't the relevant things on, on how to take care of the patient. These were the data elements that, again, as I said, um, really pertain to what, what happened um, to that patient, what happened in that ED. So we got rid of a lot of those um, kind of demographic um, types of information. But again, I just think of it as if um, you've got someone in the ED, what happens in that ED that should be going back to um, whoever is taking care of that patient at the next facility they're going to. So background of the measure, let you read that. This is kind of like, <laughs> um, I just chuckled because I probably, people are tired of me harping about this one, but, but I don't think we can, um, we can say enough about it because this is how you determine who um, you need to abstract. This is the population for the EDTC measures. And they, they have not really changed. There was one exclusion that was made, but um, there was just, there's just been quite a bit of misunderstanding um, or um, misinterpretation of some of these population um, who should be included. So um, I'm going to go through that and then make sure and stop in case we have any questions. But the population of the EDTC measure is identified by, um, is defined, excuse me, by identifying those patients admitted to the emergency department who were then discharged, transferred, or returned to these facilities under the inclusion. So it doesn't matter if you're, um, if you discharge them or if you call them a transfer or um, if they're returning to in the, in the case of maybe they've already residing in these facilities, it, it isn't about where they came from at all. It's all about where they're going after they leave your ED. So the inclusions are any acute care facility. If they are going to um, a cancer hospital, a children's hospital, um, if you would be sending them to another critical access hospital for some reason, um, a VA hospital, uh, any other acute care facility, okay? And I say other because what is not included are patients who are seen in your ED and directly admitted to your facility. Those are not included, all right? So these are transfers to other acute care facilities. Um, if they would be transferred to a hospice facility, okay? Then we have this group that fits under other healthcare facilities. 
So again, it doesn't matter if your hospital says they're discharged here, they're transferred here, or they're returning here, but if they go to an extended or intermediate care facility, if they go to a long-term care facility, um, a long-term acute care hospital, if they go to a nursing home, okay, it does not matter if that person lives in that nursing home, okay? They, I mean, I guess technically they're going home because if that's where they live, but they're not going home for this abstraction. They are being discharged or returning. That's why we use that return. That's why we put the return in here. They are being returned to a nursing home. That facility is listed here in the inclusions. So patients if that reside in a nursing home, go to the ED and go back to the nursing home are included. Now where this can get kind of sticky um, from what I hear is that hospitals will often code those patients for discharge status or um, a discharge disposition. They, they might code those as to going home. And, and I am not saying that is wrong for um, the discharge status or wrong for your billing or however, but I am saying for this abstraction, those patients should not be considered home and not be included. They are going to a nursing home, so they should be included. And and I, I'm sorry, I can't tell you, um, you know, if you've got someone who's running reports for you and you're using different codes, um, I can't tell you how to, how to run that so you can get those patients, but I can only tell you if you are missing those patients, you are not doing this abstraction correctly because you are missing, missing patients that should be part of the population. Uh, so there, we've got nursing homes, same with like skilled nursing facility if they're going to a SNF. Um, I think the other one that there are some issues with here is swing bed. If they are seen in your ED and then get discharged, transferred, um, whatever, to a swing bed, they should be included. Now, in this instance, if it is a swing bed that is part of your hospital, they should be included. Um, I believe the thought is the difference is back up here when we're talking about acute care facility. Um, they are being, um, they're seen in your ED, that's acute care. They're being admitted for further acute care. In this situation, they're seen in your ED, but then they are being admitted to swing bed. It's, a, it's not the same level of care. So admissions to your swing bed would be included. Any questions um, on inclusions? Okay, I'm going to go on. If anybody has any questions, um, I, there'll be time at the end or um, you guys just interrupt me. So those are all the inclusions. Exclusions, if they left AMA, um, obviously if they expired. Um, home for this abstraction um, would be if the patient goes to their home. Um, assisted living facilities, board and care, um, is considered home. Um, jail and prison is considered home. Um, we took these from the CMS. Uh, if, if you guys also do CMS abstraction, these are the um, discharge status codes and that um, uh, that came from CMS. So we tried to be similar to that. Um, home with home health, they're still going home. Um, and then some outpatient services. Um, the change from last year is observation status. So if you have a patient that was seen in the ED and then goes to observation, they would not be included anymore. Thought process behind that is patients could be in observation uh, for quite some time. And um, then it, it really wouldn't, you know, if they're that uh, they could be there for a day, maybe more. Um, then really it's not so much what happened in the ED that needs to be um, uh, sent to the other hospital. It, it could be more what, what's happening during that observation. So patients seen in the ED and then go to observation are not included.
Okay. Um, any questions? Great. I'm, I'm hoping then that I'm maybe not telling you anything that you didn't already know. <laughs> um, sample size requirements. Okay. The minimum is 45 cases per quarter from the required population. That's your minimum. Okay. If you have more than that and you want to do more, that is perfectly acceptable. Um, some facilities do all of their population. Um, some maybe decide to do 60 or 50. Um, the minimum is 45. Unless, of course, you don't have 45. If you have less than 45 that meet the required population, um, then you will do um, you will do all of them. OK, 45 or more. And then if you have less than 45, you must do them all. Um, we ask for a random sample. We don't tell you how to do a random sample. Um, think of it as if, you know, this, this is about documentation. What we're really looking for is, uh, are these data elements documented as being sent? So you want to make sure that you are hitting different days in the ED, getting different staff, um, you know, different shifts, whatever. Uh, don't just do one day. You know, don't just do um, the night shift, whatever. A, a random sample. And this just talks again about how I was at, saying at the beginning, um, the measures calculated using an all or none approach. You have to meet all of the data element requirements to meet the measure. The way that the, the um, what breaking them up does for you is, as you can see, you know, when you're looking at your reports, maybe you're really great on um, allergies and reactions, but maybe not so great on um, ED provider notes. You know, so your your measure is going down, but you're being able to see where the problem might be. Maybe it arises in one of the data elements rather than the other. So that's why um, on, on your reports and how you submit, um, it's broken down by the data elements. Um, when we talk about, we're talking about this information being sent. We use the word sent has to be sent to the receiving facility. This is what we mean by sent. Um, a hard copy sent directly with the patient. I think that's pretty clear for everybody. If, um, you know, the patient's being transferred and they, you know, a print off a copy, whatever, that goes with the patient, that's being sent. Um, if it is communicated via fax or phone, it has to be done within 60 minutes of the patient's departure. OK, so um, you can't just say um, acceptable documentation in your record. Um, I had a phone call with Dr. So-and-so at whatever hospital. I talked to the receiving nurse at the hospital. I had a phone call. Um, phone call isn't OK if you don't say what's in that phone call or what happened during that phone call. OK, this is all about knowing that these upcoming data elements that we're going to talk about knowing that they were sent to the receiving facility. So in any of this communication, you have to know that the data elements that we're talking about were sent. So if you're faxing, there has to be some checklist that says this and this and this was was faxed or the entire ED record was faxed. Or if there's a phone call and granted, um, I know it's easy for me to sit here and say this, but for documentation for a phone call, you would have to know that um, um, the provider note was discussed or um, medications were discussed. This was discussed. You have to know what happened in that phone call. Regarding like EHRs, okay, we're saying immediately available via the shared EHR or health information exchange. So for purposes of this measure, an EHR is defined as one where data entered, to, entered into the system is immediately available at the receiving site. Now, um, the reason we have this in here worded like this is because when we were updating the manual and we were talking to our expert panel um, with physicians and IT folks, and we, we heard that um, uh, in some places, EHRs aren't um, updated uh, immediately. And I, I might be using the, the wrong word, but um, we were told that, okay, 
say at facility A, they're typing in everything and you know everything's in there right now, but that EHR doesn't get uploaded or updated or whatever till maybe at midnight. So hospital B, even though they have a shared EHR, they're not able to see that information right away. Now, if that's the case, that this answer for sent would have to be no, because even if you have a shared EHR, but this information isn't getting there till um, uh, way after the 60 minutes, that would be a no. So you guys have to do, and, and I can't answer that question for you. I don't know everybody's EHR and everybody's system, but um, if you have a shared EHR with another facility that you're sending to, you need to find out, you know, when, when someone is documenting in your EHR, is that available immediately um, with, to the other EHR where you're sending that person? Any questions about what we mean by sent? Okay. While I'm talking about that too, um, when we're, we're talking about documentation we're looking for, everybody's forms are a little bit different. Um, everybody documents a little bit different. If you've got a transfer form, um, and it's and and you your documentation says transfer form is sent. That's that's all I'm reading, but but there's no transfer form in the record. I don't know what's on the transfer form. How could I say that the data elements were sent? If you've got a transfer form and that is in the record, you know, part of the record and it's got checked off. Oh yeah, um, we sent the nurse's notes, we sent this, we sent the ED provider note, um, you know, and it's got the different forms that were sent. Then you as an abstractor go and look at those forms, see the data elements are on there, OK, then you're looking at the transfer form, see that it was sent. That would be acceptable. OK, you can't just say if you've got documentation that says um, entire ED record sent with the patient. As long as those data elements are part of that ED record, that would be a yes, because you've got documentation that that entire ED record was sent. If your documentation says pertinent information sent, um, what does that mean? What's pertinent to you might not be what's pertinent to me, might not be what's pertinent to Kai. You know, um, pertinent means nothing. And, I, and I've seen that uh, on way more records than, I, than, than you would maybe think. So that documentation isn't telling me any, enough of what was sent. It's all about knowing the data elements were sent in one of these ways to the receiving facility. Any questions? OK, you guys are still hearing me, right? <laughs> we are. OK, yes. OK, um, so no questions. I'm going to go on. Um, please don't be afraid to ask any questions, um, you know, because this is this is for you guys. So. And, and, you know, if you've got a question, probably somebody else has it, too. Um, this page again is talking about um, what I said a couple times before. It's an all or none measure. To meet the measure, you have to make sure all of these data elements were like answered yes. OK, now we'll get into the data elements themselves. Um, so this one is home medications. So does the medical record documentation indicate that the patient's current home medication list was sent to the receiving facility? Now we have current in here because um, what we found sometimes is that with EHRs, if this patient has maybe been seen before in your hospital, um, what might get pulled up is uh, a med list that was maybe from the time they were there before. Well, um, there could be a lot of things that happened. You know, maybe the patient stopped taking it. Maybe some dosages were changed. Maybe it was stopped. We want to know what the current 
um, we're talking about a current home medication list. So if, if you pulled up an, um, an old maybe med list, but there's documentation that that was discussed with the patient or went over with the patient and it's what the patient is currently on, you know, that, that documentation, that would be current, but um, you know, it can't just be you pulling up an old list. Um, so yes, if there's documentation that the parents home, home, excuse me, current home medication list was sent, no, if there's no documentation that it was sent. So if you have documentation that says the patient is not on any home meds, that would be a yes, because you're, there's documentation saying they weren't on any. Um, if home medications are unknown, um, cause the patient, you know, patient can't respond, patient's in a coma, um, you know, um, had, had a brain injury, whatever, um, that would be a yes. You're, you're trying to find out what they are, but you're, you're not able to. Um, the suggested sources, the sources for everything in here is the emergency department record, the current emergency department record for this encounter. And then um, we add a transfer summary um, if you have one. We're not saying you have to have one, um, but if you have one, um, it is certainly acceptable to find this information on there. We consider that part of the ED record. Um, and we are talking about any kind of medications. You know, prescription medications or whatever they're taking over the over the counter, anything like that. Uh, allergies and or reactions. OK, so it could be allergies. It could be reactions, could be both. Um, anything around allergies and or reactions. So does the medical record documentation indicate that the patient's allergy history uh, was sent to the receiving facility? So yes, if there's documentation that the patient's allergy information, um, or if it says unknown, allergies unknown, um, was sent to the receiving facility. Then you select no if there's no documentation of any information about allergies was sent to the receiving facility. So we're talking about food allergies or food reactions, um, any medication allergies or reactions, um, any other allergies like maybe they're allergic to a bee sting or you know have a reaction to shellfish or whatever. That'd be food allergies, I guess. Sorry. Anyway, any kind of allergies or reactions. Um, and again, if allergies are unknown, that would be yes, um, because you tried to find out allergies, but you weren't able to. Or no known allergies, that's also a yes. You asked about allergies, they have no known allergies. Um, and source is emergency department record and transfer summary. Again, same thing. Uh, medications administered in the ED. So does the medical record documentation indicate that the list of medications administered in the ED was sent to the receiving facility? Yes, if there's documentation, the list of meds administered was sent. No, if there's no documentation, the list of meds were sent. And then here is where one where we have an NA, not applicable. And you can use this option if there were no medications given. Okay. If no medications were given in the ED, you can record an NA. And for the purposes of abstraction, an NA is considered to be um, a yes answer when you know trying to figure out if this patient passed the measure. In case you're wondering, NA doesn't throw them out or whatever. NA is considered a yes. It's like this is just not applicable in this instance. Robin? Yes? Yeah, this is Catherine. I had a question come in on chat. Um, it says for home meds, can the verbiage medications not on file be used? Um, that doesn't mean anything to me, so I, I would say no. Um, because I don't know what they mean by that. Um, and, I'm not, of, and I'm not wanting to call out who asked unless they want me to. So um, no, if you no, and, and, wanted and to no, come I totally get that. Mute. So um, 
either if that person either wants to put more in the chat <laughs> or um you know contact me outside of this but but to me that kind of means okay they don't have anything on file for this person but i don't know that that means you know that this person hasn't been taking um a baby aspirin once a day or you know that they haven't been taking something so i don't think that's clear enough i would say no to that and again um, she um, said that in this instance there are no medications listed in their record well yeah that's not a good enough um because that's not telling me what's current is happening currently that to me just is saying we don't have anything listed, but I don't know that that's current. So I'm kind of leery about that. I don't think I would accept that. But if whoever asked that is, you know, feels like really strongly or that I'm maybe not understanding, um, if you want to shoot me an email um, or shoot it, you know, to Kai or Catherine and they can, they can forward it to me. Um, I can always check it out with my, my partner at the U, but, um, to me right now again that's not i'm not feeling that that's current that's necessarily current so i would say no anything else okay um so i, I think i didn't finish up with this one yet um, so again, this is where we've got our NA. Um, meds anywhere in the ED is acceptable, okay, in that ED um, documentation. Um, emergency department record, of course, the whole record, that's, that's the source for all of this. Um, if you had an MAR, if that was part of the ED documentation, um, part of that ED record, that would be acceptable. Um, again, as transfer summary as well. Any of, these, any of these would be considered part of the ED record for us. Anything else about meds before we kind of leave that one? Okay. I'm going to go on to ED provider note. Um, for use of, for any of you guys who have been doing this for a while, it used to be because uh, you know before we had H and P in there, we took away that wording because that was getting people confused because oftentimes there's not what we considered a a quote unquote H and P done when you're in, seen in the ED. So the ED provider note. What we mean by that is documentation indicating that an ED provider note was completed by the physician, advanced practice nurse, or physician's assistant and sent to the receiving facility. So we're saying this note has to be done by one of these um, providers. Um, if there's documentation that it was completed and sent, it's a yes. No, if there's no documentation that it was completed and sent. For our abstraction, this note must include at a minimum the reason for the current encounter. So why is this person here? What happened? History of the present illness or condition. Again, what, what happened? What's currently wrong with the patient? A focused physical exam. And any relevant chronic conditions, okay? But if you've got a patient who is neurologically impaired, if they're in a coma, um, you know, if, if they're unresponsive, then don't worry about chronic conditions. But if you've got someone who has asthma, if they're a diabetic, this is what we mean here. Anything around that should be in that ED provider note. Okay, what this does not say is that this has to be a dictated, transcribed, like formal note. I mean, we, we don't, it doesn't matter if this if this is some handwritten notes and they get sent. OK, um, I'm finding out that a, some people have been answering this no because they're um, their their dictated note or the transcribed note or the signed note maybe doesn't get in the record till after the 60 minutes. OK, we're, we're not saying that this has to be signed or, you know, we're saying this note has to have been done by one of these providers has to contain this information and then has to be sent within the time frame. So you can give yourself credit if that happens. Maybe it isn't signed yet or maybe um, 
it, maybe it is just handwritten notes that went with the patient, but they're dictating something later that gets in the record or whatever. Um, that's okay to answer yes. If it's by one of these providers and this information is included and it's done within the time frame. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, mental status orientation assessment. Um, for any of you guys that were doing this, again, back when we had the 20 some data elements, these were kind of little pieces of a couple of different elements, but our uh, technical expert panel really felt that uh, information around the patient's mental status or an orientation was important information to be going to the receiving facility. So does the medical record documentation indicate that a mental status or orientation assessment was completed and sent to the receiving facility? Um, yes, if it was completed and sent, no, if it wasn't. Um, so acceptable documentation. Some of what we would be looking for that would be a yes would be patient is alert and oriented. Patient is alert, patient is oriented, patient is comatose, uh, patient is confused, um, patient is found, uh, patient is unresponsive. These are the kind of things we're looking for. Um, if there's a coma scale done, if there's any kind of stroke scale, um, a Glasgow coma scale, that would be acceptable documentation. Um, an assessment of their um, status. Any kind of mental status, orientation, exam, scale, or assessment. Um, there, there could be ma many different ones. We didn't list them all, but any kind of assessment around that. Okay. This doesn't say it has to be physician or, or any kind of provider, um, specific provider. You know, so nursing documentation of this is acceptable as well. So the suggested data source, again, is the whole ED record transfer summary. Um, if you have like the Glasgow Coma Scale or any neural flow sheets, um, any kind of vital sign flow sheets that might have this information, that were, they're all considered part of that ED in current encounter record as well. But um, because sometimes these specific sheets are part of that, we, we um, put those on under the data sources. But again, um, looking for some kind of assessment around their orientation or their mental status. Okay, one that wasn't on here would um, that I think maybe that we could see is a uh, patient was depressed. Okay, I think a lot of times you you know kind of starts out maybe a provider note with some of this stuff where you where you maybe find that a lot, but. Um, anywhere in that ED encounter, you know, looking for this kind of information. Reason for transfer and plan or care. Okay, so does the medical record documentation indicate that a reason for transfer and or a plan of care was identified by the physician, advanced practice nurse, or physician's assistant and sent to the receiving facility? Okay, so here again, we are saying this has to be documentation by one of these providers. So is there documentation that that information was written and sent or there's no documentation that it was written or sent? So reason for transfer could be um, sending them to hospital X for a cardiac cath or um, sending them to hospital X because um, we don't have the facilities to treat them here, or we don't have the capability to treat them here, or they're go, um, being sent for surgery. Um, any of those kind of things, that's a reason for transfer. Um, plan of care would be, um, we'll see patient next week in the nursing home. Um, we'll um, set up an appointment for the patient next week in my office or whatever. That's, that's like plans of care. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking for here. Um, what we added to this one is for a suggested data source is the EMTALA form. Um, the reason it's not on the other ones does not mean you can't use it for the other data elements, but it was put here because uh, I believe on almost every EMTALA form, there is a reason for a transfer. You've got to say why you're transferring that person. So we added just so that people would be aware that 
If you have a form, it can certainly be used um, for this data element. It can be used for all of the data elements. Um, I've seen people who have um, updated their Imtala form to include checkboxes for every data element. And if they're sent, they're checked off and signed, and that's perfectly fine to use. But we don't say you um, you have to have one for for abstracting this. Um, I, I mean, I believe technically you have to have one for um, for certain patients. But this is just saying if you have a form, you can use it um, to see if this information was sent. Uh, tests and or procedures performed, okay? Does the medical record documentation indicate that the information was sent regarding any tests or procedures that were done in the ED? So this one is asking, was information sent to let the receiving facility know that certain tests, these tests were done, okay? So was there documentation on all tests and procedures that were done in the ED prior to transfer sent to the receiving facility? No, if there's no documentation sent that indicates any tests or procedures were done. And then you, you have an NA because there might not be any tests or procedures done. So this one is asking just information was sent that these were performed. So any lab work, any x-rays, um, any EKGs, any kind of procedures was information sent that these were performed. This just is to the clarify, more Robin. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, just to clarify, if if the answer is NA because um, no procedures were needed, so none were done, then they would uh, answer yes for that measure. Nope, this one is NA. Oh, okay. Yep, if none, if no tests or procedures were done, then, then you have, we've got the NA option on this one. Okay. Um, okay, and then this one is talking about the results. Okay. So to say yes, um, so does the medical record indicate that results were sent from completed tests and procedures done in the ED? So yes. If there's documentation of results being sent either with the patient or communicated to the receiving facility when available. No, if there's no documentation of results being sent either with the patient or communicated to the receiving facility when available. And then NA, again, if there's no tests or procedures were done. Okay, so this is all about hey, these tests were done, what about the results? So if you've got a shared EHR, then tests and procedure results are considered sent. So you can select yes. The thought behind that is if you've got a known shared EHR, um, when these tests and results are available, they would be available to that um, facility that has the shared EHR with you. If results aren't sent, okay, at the time that the patient is leaving, and you don't share an EHR with where the patient's going, then documentation must include a plan to communicate results to select yes. So for example, patient had a urine culture. Patient left before the urine culture results were ready. To say yes here, that documentation needs to say, um, Urine culture results will be faxed to the facility um, when completed, or urine culture results will be called to the facility when completed. If there is nothing about how those urine culture results are going to get to that facility, then the answer to this one would be no. So if you've got, um, and and usually it's we're talking about, I think cultures is the, is the main one we see often. Um, because cultures are, I don't think, hardly ever done by the time a person left. Um, there's got to be documentation on how that information is going to be sent to that facility. It's got to be documented. It cannot be that you know we, we call everyone when we get the results back. 
Okay. Think about abstraction like this. Um, this is what I always tell people. And so you probably heard this before, but um, if I came to your facility tomorrow and I abstracted an ER visit, I should get the same results as you do. And I don't know anything about your, your procedures. All I know is what's documented in the record. And that's how we should be doing this as well. So if you've got, again, um, Tests that were done with results not ready to go when that patient leaves, you need to have documentation saying how those results will get to the receiving facility. Robin, I have another question. Um, this is Catherine. A uh, question came in. If both facilities share a record such as EPIC, do you have to document that culture results will be sent? Um, no, I, I would. I think she's saying if if you have a shared EHR, if you know you have a shared EHR, then tests and procedure results are considered sent. So if no, no, I uh, with it, it don't. Uh, I am assuming here, which you know I know we always say don't do, but I'm I'm assuming when you say that you both have Epic, you have a shared EHR, because I know Epic can be kind of. Um, Everybody has Epic, but everybody makes Epic a little bit, you know, geared to their facility. But if you're if you're telling me you've got to share the HR, then then this is saying um, they would be considered sent, and you could select yes. So this one would really be coming into play most often if you are sending a patient to somewhere where you do not have a shared EHR. I hope I answered that person's question. If not, they can maybe do more in the chat. Um, but that's the data elements, guys. The rest of the manual is just a, a paper tool if you wanted um, to collect on that before you did your entry. But those are the data elements and your population. So we've got about 5, 10 minutes. Um, there were a couple of questions that came into Kai, and um, let me do the one and, and now person who asked this, if I'm not getting this right, um, please come on the chat or get back to, to one of us. But I believe what they said is they were asking and, and now please realize that I don't know everybody uses different phrases and has different systems, but I believe it was something around asking if your your IT could look up and see whether something was clicked on in the record and that's the way you would know that the other facility, the other site looked at this information. Um, no, that's that's not OK to answer this um, because we, we don't really we kind of have to stop at the point where um, this is all about you guys documenting about sending data to the receiving facility. We, we don't you know, we can't um, we don't have the resources. We can't check to see whether you know, once this gets to that other facility, if people are looking at it or opening it, you know, or we don't have any control over that. That would certainly be the best, <laughs> the best way, you know, um, to know uh, if this measure was really being useful, but we can't do that. So this is about, um, this is about you as an abstractor looking at this documentation. And then someone was asking about um, had a question about tests and procedure results. I'm I'm hoping maybe that I answered that, but if I didn't, um, person, please come in the chat or um, contact me after. Anybody have any questions about anything I talked about? Uh, did I go too fast? Could you understand me? Um, was there something that you never heard before? Well, I'm going to hope that that's good, that I didn't tell you anything that you maybe didn't already know or you understood what I was saying. Um, I know it doesn't always mean that you have to like it, but, um, you know, if you can if understand how to do it, then then that's that's what this was about. 
Uh, we did have one question just come in. Um, would it count as an acceptable yes if our IT department can see the appropriate parts of the chart was uh, accessed by the receiving facility? OK, I, I think that was the person who um, who maybe sent the question to Kai and um, and, and that answer is no. Um, because again, um, you're not having any documentation in your record on on uh, I've got to think about that. Um, you you know we don't want you to go to IT and do anything. This is about um, this is about what you're doing when you're abstracting. But if, if I think about maybe what you're saying, um, what this person is asking, you you apparently have a shared EHR. Um, if you have a shared EHR and you know that that data is available to that facility, okay, then immediately available back when we were talking about what sent meant, um, then that would that would be a yes. You you don't really we're not asking you to take that step of making sure that facility looked at it. Um, we can't do that because you know there are people who who don't have shared EHRs but they've sent the data. We don't have any control of if it's quote unquote looked at. So you wouldn't have to do that. What you would just have to know is that um, were these data elements, if you've got the shared EHR, were the data elements immediately available for someone that facility, for someone at that facility to look at? You, you don't have to control whether, I mean, hopefully they looked at it. That would sure be defeating the purpose of doing some of this stuff, but, but you don't have to see that they did. We, we stop it before then, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, it, it, would, it would certainly you. be the ideal. That's the whole point of this. It's being sent or it's being made available for someone to look at, but but we really can't take it that step because we don't have any control over what happens at the receiving facilities. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, she said that you did answer her question. OK, great. And yeah, another one sorry, just I, came I in. Confusing when I first talked about it. It's it really is about having the shared EHR, and if you know that that you have one, and that data is immediately available, that's that's just what we have to know. We don't have to know that they opened it up to look at it. That's kind of that's sort of on them. <laughs> Hopefully they do, but you don't have to make sure of that. Another question: If we have been adding assisted living facilities up to now. Will it alter the data if we stop now? Um, no, don't don't worry about that. Um, you were you were maybe not considering them to be home. Um, now, just you don't have to include them. OK, you answered that. She said thank you. Does anybody have any other final questions? I don't have anything else in the chat. And you know, always know you guys that um, you know, if you don't want to be on the chat, or maybe for people who are listening to this that couldn't be on the call but listening to the recording, um, Kai and Catherine know how to reach me. Um, you know, if something comes up that we didn't talk about, or you see something when you're abstracting. Um, you know, you know, my job is to to assist them to assist you. So, you know, sometimes they'll send me a question and I'll think, oh, I need a couple more answers and or a couple more. It leads to some other questions. So I'll just say, hey, you know, do you care if I contact the hospital or or also Kai and Catherine? So, you know, um, sometimes I've chatted with with some of your hospitals and we kind of know each other, so to speak. Um, when I hear from any of your hospitals, I always let you know that we were in contact just to kind of keep you um, updated. So um, everybody's kind of all in the loop. OK, I'm thinking we can probably wrap up. I don't see any other questions. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you for having me today. Yeah, Kai, uh, kind of back to you. Any final words? Um, thank you all for attending and hope you have a great week.